supporting multimedia on IP. IP simply provides best effort service. And um, so there are three things that one thing that can be done is that we can basically compress it. That way we have very low rate. If you wanted 10 megabit video, very likely that most of it will be lost on the way. But if you want 10 kilobit video, very likely that it will make it through the internet. So most of the video today is very low rate. It was not used to be that low rate before. So as you notice, MPEG 1 to 4, MPEG 1 was 1.5 megabits. You couldn't do much video on the net. MPEG 4 is in kilobits. So we are all watching video now because it is in kilobits. And the reason it has become better is because of the compression. Now we have better compression techniques. That makes it low rate and low loss. Now 1 to 20 percent loss can be concealed. So if you lose 1 to 20 percent of the packets, people will not notice it. And they will notice it, but they will live with it. Eyes are more forgiving than ears. If you lose 20 percent of the video, the eyes will forgive you. If you lose 20 percent of the audio, somebody will disconnect on you. So when we do audio video, we want to make sure that the audio goes, gets better quality of service, you know, audio goes there first. And the video gets lower priority. Everybody understand that? All right. Forward error correction is used. So we might put some extra bits before sending. So if we lose one packet, we can reconstruct that packet. So instead of two packets, we might send three packets. Forward error correction. End-to-end -end delay is limited to 400 milliseconds. Now for audio at least, if the delay is very large, then people don't like the sound. And we already mentioned this number before, 400 milliseconds is the kind of limit. And the jitter is overcome by play out buffer. I think this is a repeat of something we already said. So jitter is the variability in the delay. And, um, and that's how we keep the buffer at the end. So that even though the, <coughs> the packets are coming irregularly, but we are playing them regularly. And if the jitter becomes very large, then the buff we will basically we will not be able to get the packets on time or play them on time, and they will be you know, good, and therefore we will have to lose them. So each chunk that comes, the chunk of voice that comes, or a video that comes has a sequence number and time stamp, so we know when to play it. And play or delay can be adaptively adjusted according to the major delay variation. So basically what we do is when we start a new connection, we see what is the variability for the first five, ten packets. And then accordingly we set up that we will not start the first packet until, you know, we get ten seconds of video or two seconds of video or one minute of video. That is determined by how much variability is seen. So here is what the video should look like. Basically you would like to have constant bit rate. You want to have a packet every, you know, 30 milliseconds. Actually, we, we watch most of the video we watch, or most of the video we want to watch is 30 frames per second. 30 frames per second is 33 milliseconds per frame, right? So that's what we want to see. So every 33 milliseconds we want to see a frame come in. Obviously, it doesn't come that way. So what we do is the packet is coming like this. You know, so first of all, we have to wait this much anyway, but we wait even longer before we start playing. So what we do is the we delay it and then we start playing. At this point, we should have all the packets that we need. So this would have arrived, packet number one, two, three, four, five. This would have all arrived before they are needed to be played. If these cars ever cross, then the packet that came late cannot be played. Um, so you need to determine the playout delay. So basically what you do is when you get the packet, you don't play. For the first few packets, you see how much is the variability. And then you allow for that variability by putting a buffer. All right, so there is a little, little mathematics here. You need to read in the book. Basically, for each packet, you calculate the delay. The delay of the IF packet is the delay of the previous estimate of the delay, 1 minus A times previous estimate of the delay, plus the estimate of this packet. So basically, this is exponential weighted average. RI is the receiving time, TI is the sending time, so this is the delay. RI minus TI is the delay measured. This is sample delay and you keep an average. Similarly, you keep a variation. And then you start 
that I will wait for so much of the average plus so much of the variation, let's say four times the variation plus the average, and then I will play. All right? Now this four times is not fixed. You could decide five times, you could decide six times, but basically what you're trying to do is by saying four times, you want to really make sure that you get 99%, 99.9% or some percentage of the packets in that window, time window. So, uh, so basically, um, this thing you can plot as shown here, and then um, once the play out buffer is decided, then you can calculate how much delay is left. If the delay becomes negative, then basically a packet arrives late, and, and that's what you need to be careful about. All right. Next thing is, how do you recover from the packet loss? So we said we, you can do two things. First, you can do a forward error correction. That means that you send more bits than you need to send. You can send n plus 1 packets instead of n packets. So you can send four packets instead of three. And also you can do is um, you can make the packets such that if you lose a packet, you don't lose the whole scene, you lose some part of the scene. So for example, this first packet contains one 5, 9, and 13. And the second packet contains 2, 3, 4. So if you just lose this whole packet, it would have lost 3, 7, 11, and 15. And you can still play 1, 2, and 4, 5, 6, and 8. And these little delays are much more bearable to human beings than if you have to have that big delay, big loss. See, the parity bit is 8 bit plus 1 bit, right? So you could calculate a parity packet. You have four packets, you just put them vertically and then calculate the parity for bit by bit. So now you have a fifth packet, which is simply a parity packet. As long as you get four out of five packets, you can construct it back. Just see what I mean? So you send, so there are whole error correcting codes people use so that you get extra packets, extra bits. So instead of putting the extra bits into the same packet, you put extra bits into extra packets. How do you make up the delay network? Yeah, so for the voice and Skype it is difficult, and that's where the Skype's um, innovativeness lied, that they made it possible that basically with proper coding and proper uh, error corrections and everything else, the voice is acceptable. In spite of all this variation. Now, so one technique that is used very commonly is error is that if you miss something, you just replay the previous one. So if you miss 11, you can just play back 10 two times. All right? And that works in many situations. If you listen to my lecture from the recording, sometimes packets are lost. And you might hear me saying da 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 I didn't, I just said only once, but the computer played out four times because they lost four packets. See what I mean? So that is a common error um, concealing technique. That is called error concealment. Is that you hide the error from the user. I mean, you know, and similarly, when you see a video on the screen, sometimes you see blocks. Right? That is because they lost some packets. If they played a zero, you would disconnect. So zero is bad because people don't like a deadline. So noise is better than zero. Right? And the same person's voice second time is better than noise. Right? I mean, you, if suppose somebody puts you on hold, what do they do? They do two things. Either they will have some noise going on so that you know that it is alive, or they will put some music. Right? If they just put you on hold, <laughs> you, you don't know whether they are there or not. Right? So, so that's the okay. All right. So these are lots of techniques here. These are interleaving. This is called interleaving. These are playing out the old syllable that is called that is called um, concealment. These are that the low resolution stream, no, we didn't discuss this one, but we, you send a low resolution stream in addition to the correct stream. So you are watching a 10, milli, 10 
megabit per second video paid for from uh, what is the name of the company that supplies movies? Huh? Netflix. So you're watching Netflix, they might send a 10 kilobit video also just in case that 10 megabit doesn't make it, they can play instead of a noise, they can play a low resolution screen. So that's another error concealment. And then obviously this is error correction, forward recursion. Another thing that is happening is that um, basically people figured out that the video and audio require very low delay because nobody wants to you know, basically have long round trips and jitters. So they put the servers everywhere in the world. So for example, Akamai is a company that has put hundreds of servers throughout the world. And you can put your audio video with Akamai. If you are a company, you can, um, you can, you can basically get the service of Akamai, they will put your videos on their servers. And when somebody in China wants to see your video, they will serve it from China, not from USA. Understood? All right? So the local copy is served. So that way everybody gets fast service. So that is called Content Distribution Network, CDN. It's a lot of duplicated data, and it has to be a lot of static data too, because if you are changing every second, you know, Akamai cannot handle it. But they can handle Netflix very well, right? All right, so now the IETF or the IT people also thought about what to do for the real time and they designed a transport protocol called real time transport protocol. Actually the name is a misnomer because TCP is a transport protocol and UDP is a transport protocol. RTP runs on the top of them. All right, they should be calling it session protocol but it is called transport protocol. And um, so what it is is that it adds some more fields on the top of these RTP. So on the top of UDP, it adds some more fields that allow all the real-time applications to use them. Basically, every real-time application had their own way of somehow indicating the time, indicating coding, and so on and so forth. They said, no, no, hold on. Let's do a standard protocol so that all the applications can use some standard method of talking to the other side. So that is RTP. RTP is the real time component of the transport protocol if you want to call it that way. But it runs on UDP. So, so here is what it has. It has a payload type. So payload type for example could be a 64 kilobit voice, a 13 kilobit voice, 2.4 kilobit voice, could be a motion JPEG video could be S261 video, could be MPEG2 video. So these are all the things that you can, so basically once you say this, use RTP, you put the payload type, the other side will know what you're using. These numbers are all standard. Then there is a sequence number, which is simply the packet number. Then there's a timestamp, again standard timestamp, GMT timestamp. Then you have synchronizing source identifier. So this is basically the stream number. So basically, you know, you might have many, many things going on in parallel. In particular, you might have a stream, a audio stream, you might have video stream, you might have a screen, you might have a data stream, right, in that session. So all those things are put here, and miscellaneous field, and there are other fields. Okay, yeah, go ahead. If you don't have a timestamp, how do you know what packet this pack, what time this packet has to be played? No, sequence number, okay. Sequence number is good if all the packets are exactly timed, no, then maybe you can convert the time into the sequence number. The packets could be, so say for example your screen, your screen doesn't come in every 30 milliseconds, your screen comes whenever you press a key. Time is different than sequence number. That you should understand, right? Yeah, that's different. Just like yeah, so time is required for presentation. Time is basically the time of generation, and that has to match with the time of presentation. 
sequence number is simply I made one, two packets out of one or I made 15 packets out of one, you know, sequence number could be anything. That doesn't indicate oh, time. Yeah. Yeah, no, not all the packets could be same size, it could be different sizes and the different rates because different rates, so I mean like, you know, they could be, so you cannot just make out the sequence number. So you need a time stamp anyway, just, <laughs> all right? All right, so in addition to RTP, now they did, this is IP days, right? So in IP, they have IP protocol, which is a forwarding protocol, and then they have IP, C, I mean, ICMP, ICMP the control protocol. So RTP has a control protocol which goes with RTP called RTCP real time control protocol or RTP control protocol. So RTP control protocol is something which does not carry data but it carries control. Control is anything that is required to make that work and so let's see what it does. RTCP is a protocol that is run along with the RTP and using this the receiver send a report to the sender. So the receivers, you know, movies being broadcast to 15 people here, uh, 60 people here, 60 people will send the report back to the sender saying that I am missing every 10th packet. You know, I am missing 90% of your packet. Something like that, right? And then the sender can do something about it. So this feedback is done using RTCP. So also used by sender to report stream information. Another thing RTCP can do, do is broadcast something which is not really data, but say, well, I am going to broadcast my lecture using MPEG-4, all right? So RTCP can be used for that. It can be used to adjust the transmission speed quality or for diagnosis. And, um, and it can be, basically, it contains SSRC, which is that um, synchronizing source number. So basically, you know what stream they're talking about. <coughs> Fraction of packet last, last sequence number received, inter-arrival jitter. So these are the kinds of things that you can send it back. Receiver report rate is adjusted inversely number of the receivers. So that's another feature of RDCP. And it's an important feature is that if there is one user, one receiver, then the feedback will come very fast. If there are two receivers, then the feedback will come at half the rate so that the total feedback is same rate. So let's say I can take 10 packets per second. If there is only one user, I will get one packet, so 10 packets from one user. On the other hand, if there are two users, they will send me five packets per second each. So my the feedback is still 10. If there are three, I will get three from each of them, you know, 10 divided by three from each of them, and I will get 10 total. So the Report, receiver report rate is adjusted inversely to the number of receivers. And the sender report rate is adjusted inversely to the number of senders. Now there could be multiple senders too. For example, in a tele in a group conferencing. In a group conferencing, N people are talking to N people. Right? So there are N receivers and N senders. So that's also adjusted. Total RTCP traffic has to be less than 5% of the media data rate. So this is a guideline that basically you don't want to have you know, the network consumed by these reports. So keep it below 5%. All right, so that is the second protocol. So we already talked about two protocols, three protocols so far. If you remember, RTSP is for what? Streaming. RTP is for what? to indicate what is in the packet, right? To indicate the type and all that, sequence number and so on. RTCP is for feedback of RTP as to how it is going. Now we have SIP, the fourth protocol called SIP, which is actually probably the most important protocol and the latest of the protocols. SIP is only 10 years old. <coughs> 